Addictive cravings can ruin lives in many ways. One major way that addictions like porn and masturbation harm the user is by damaging neural circuits and inducing severe depression and anxiety. And worse, users often report that the only way to get out of these feelings is to relapse in the habit, creating an endless cycle of shame and depression. Such that every bit of pleasure or pleasure-seeking that causes release of dopamine will be balanced out by a little bit of pain. And we don't experience this as physical pain, at least not at first. We experience it as craving for more of the thing that brought us pleasure. Every bit of pleasure or pleasure seeking that causes the release of dopamine will be balanced out by a little bit of pain. This pain makes users crave more of that substance or addictive behavior. The way users remain in constant longing for their addictive behavior causes them to destroy the natural balance of hormones and dopamine in their brain and bodies. Here's how Huberman explains it. The crucial thing to understand is that if we remain in constant pursuit of pleasure, the pain side of the balance tips so that each time we are in pursuit of that pleasureful thing, activity, or substance, we are going to experience, we literally achieve less dopamine release each subsequent time. So we get less pleasure and the amount of craving increases. Now, after a certain point or threshold, we call that addiction. The more an addicted user does a particular addictive behavior, the less the amount of pleasure he gets from it. Yet, the craving increases. This is the most common reason why it's hard for addicts to stop their habits. Most times, it's not that their will or desire to quit isn't strong enough, it's that they've rewired their brain so many times and so frequently that their addiction has been accepted as part of their daily life and conscious thinking. So how does one reset the balance and restore neurochemicals and dopamine wiring to the baseline? This is very important. The way to reset the balance is actually to enter into states in which we are not in pursuit of pleasure, to literally enter states in which we are bored, maybe even a little bored and anxious, and that resets the pleasure pain balance so that we can return to our pursuit of pleasure in a way that's healthy and that in an ongoing way won't lead to this over tipping or this increase in the amount of pain. So that's how to reset the balance. But one thing many porn addicts have in common is depression. Whether it's pornography use, drugs, or any other form of addictive behavior, any prolonged exposure to these behaviors will cause varying levels of depression and anxiety. Generally, three chemicals are responsible for depression in the brain. Serotonin, dopamine, and nepinephrine. This thing we call major depression clearly involves serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. And in some individuals, they may be more deficient in one or several of those or all of those, whereas in other individuals, it might be a different collection of chemicals. Some anti-depression treatments entail using drugs that increase or decrease one or more of these chemicals, as the case may be. So does this mean users should use drugs to reduce your porn-induced depression? Well, no. Using drugs to stop depression isn't such a good idea. As explained by Huberman, some of these drugs work by altering blood pressure, and they almost always come with mild to severe side effects. If drugs aren't a good way to get out of depression, what else could work? Believed by many neuroscientists, it is generally stated that there is no universal cure for depression. What works for some may not work for others. Some may need antidepressants or pharmaceuticals. Others may need a balanced meal or a cold shower to do the trick. Norepinephrine impacts blood pressure, and drugs that lower blood pressure reduce levels of norepinephrine, and that, in many cases, was shown to lead to depression or depressive-like symptoms. And so these drugs, these tricyclic drugs and the MAO inhibitors, actually increase norepinephrine, and frankly, they do quite a good job of relieving some, if not all, of the symptoms of major depression. However, they carry with them many side effects. Some of those side effects are side effects related to blood pressure itself. By increasing nor noradrenaline, norepinephrine as it's called, you raise blood pressure. That can be dangerous. That can be uncomfortable. But they also have a lot of other side effects. And the reason they have other side effects is because they impact systems in the brain and in the body that impact things like libido, appetite, digestion, and others. And we'll talk about each of those in sequence. Depending on your brain wiring and the cause of your depression, Things like exercise and cold showers may help, but for some people, 
especially those deep in addiction. None of these basic methods will work in the short term. Well, if some aspects of depression are related to low levels of norepinephrine, will taking cold showers relieve your depression? Perhaps it might even relieve certain aspects of that depression. Is it a cure? Well, that's going to depend on the individual. Will exercise help? Well, if you go out for a run, you're going to increase the amount of norepinephrine in your body. If you enjoy that run, it's likely that you'll increase the levels of dopamine and probably serotonin in your brain and body as well. Will that cure your depression? Well, there are a lot of studies exploring how exercise can impact depression. And indeed, regular exercise is known to be a protective behavior against depression. For instance, if you watch porn and masturbate, you'd probably feel too weak to even exercise. So what do you do in chronic cases like these? How can chronic addicts be helped out of depression? Let's bring it over to Dr. Andrew Huberman for further explanation. If people are far enough along in this thing, this sometimes called disease, sometimes called disorder, but major depression, oftentimes they can't get the energy to even get up and take a bath or a shower. They have no motivation to do it. One method that may work for addicts, however, is to try and reduce stress. Stress is one of the major causes of depression, and it occurs in almost every kind of addiction, including pornography. When addicted, porn users stay awake all night. They put their eyes and body under stress, not to mention the production of dopamine that is being overworked at every second of the addicting activity. This kind of stress will surely cause anxiety and depression in the morning. But it's very important to highlight the fact that these circuits that are accessible to some of us, the circuits for happiness, for pursuit of pleasure, for exercise, for getting in a cold shower, if that's your thing, that those circuits are present in all people. But for certain people that are experiencing major depression and are really in the depths of their, of their depression, they can't really access those circuits in the same way that people who are not suffering from depression can. Andrew Huberman referred to a case study of a video game addict, but the same goes for pornography addiction. This addiction has ruined many relationships, marriages, and careers of both young men and women. It's best to stop tipping dopamine levels and stressing our mind and body through the overuse of pornography. For someone deep in the addiction, trying to stop right out of the bat may be difficult, but essentially, the cure becomes withdrawing from it for longer and longer periods of time, trying to avoid porn for three days straight, then one month, and so on. Eventually, users undo the damage to their eyes and brain and slowly notice the depression disappears. Andrew Huberman recommends that 30 days of abstaining from an addictive habit will reset any damages to the brain. I know to be really struggling with depression, and it is thought, and we don't know for sure, but it is thought that some of that depression was probably triggered by an overindulgence in video games and other highly dopaminergic activities to the point where those activities eventually were countered by the pain balance that Dr. Anna Lemke described. And he now has to do those activities repeatedly and for many, many hours each day just to feel okay, not even to derive pleasure from them. And worse, many other activities practically all uh, other activities have lost their zest. They've lost their excitement and there's and his sense of pleasure for them. And so there's a really um, active campaign now to reset that system. So number one, don't overwhelm your pleasure centers, either through activities or compounds. It might seem counterintuitive, but you're setting yourself up for anhedonia and depression if you do that. It's not just about addiction, that too, but it's also about setting yourself for anhedonia. Ready to conquer NOFAP? Grab our digital NoFap guide now. End your porn addiction. Skyrocket your self-esteem and achieve your goals. Packed with proven techniques, expert advice, and relapse prevention tricks. Click the link below and break free today. Trying to replace negative habits with good ones helps reduce the chances of slipping or relapsing. Such things like a good diet. Supplements and exercise can also go a long way in helping recover faster from pornography use and addiction-induced depression. If you do feel like you need to reset that system, it really does seem like a 30-day complete detox from whatever activity or substance that is, and ideally it doesn't continue after that 30 days, especially in um, conditions of drugs of abuse. 
major depressive symptoms often don't have the energy, the willingness, or um, the capacity to engage in some of these activities. But things like cold showers, deliberate cold showers, things like regular exercise, they aren't just feel-good activities. They actually engage the norepinephrine system and, and keep that system tuned up and allow us to increase our norepinephrine levels at will on a regular basis. And their mood-enhancing effects are real effects that at the level of, of neurochemistry. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing, ringing the bell, and enabling notifications to never miss videos like this. Thank you.